Hi folks! Something a little bit different for me today. I got myself a small dedicated hydrogen alpha solar telescope. Um, I really wanted to take pictures of the sun with a bit more detail on the surface and also just be able to do something during the day. I used to own a Coronado PSD, the personal solar telescope, which is absolutely brilliant, but I couldn't get on with it when it came to imaging, which is fair enough because they are made primarily for visual observation. But I really wanted to take pictures of the full sun disk. And there is about 10% chance that I might be in the States for next year's 2024 solar eclipse. So I got myself a 40 millimeter lunt. I've had some snags when I was setting it up, so I'm just going to talk through those and show how I fixed them and then how I prep it for imaging. So this is the box in which I received the telescope. As you can see, it's quite unceremonious. There's no Lund branding on it whatsoever. And the one thing that I found really funny is that there is no manual. I received a warranty sheet and a flyer for Bresser which I thought was random until I tried to find manual for these online. And it turns out that Bresser is the European importer for Lund. So if you're looking for a manual, it's going to be on the Bresser website. And there is no manual for 40 millimeter Lunds on the official Lund website. So that's a handy thing to know if you're looking for a manual. So when I took the telescope out of the box, I noticed that it's actually a little bit lighter than the Coronado PST and the filter is not integrated into the telescope. It's actually in this diagonal here. Um, yeah, this, this telescope here is actually hollow, but this means that you can mix and match your diagonals based on fi what filter size you want. I went with B600 because that's the smallest number you can get away with for imaging. Um, at first I was really confused with what all those numbers mean for solar imaging, like B400, 500, 600, 1200. But then I read that it's the actual size of the filter in the housing. And if you're imaging with it, 600 is pretty much the minimum that you want. When I removed the dust cap, which is actually rubber and it's pretty flimsy, I noticed that there was some dust on the front cell and some marks on this black housing here. I don't know, it, it might be that this is the first telescope that I bought brand new and all my previous ones were secondhand, so I was expecting when I take it off, it's just going to be pristine and really clear, but it's just dust on the front cell, so I fully accept that it might just be me being fussy. <laughs> the first snag that I encountered was right after taking the telescope out of the box and trying to set it up, and that was the focuser. My telescope has a helical focuser here, and when I got mine out of the box, the focuser was completely detached. It was just spinning and wasn't really engaging at all. So normally I'd kind of try and MacGyver something myself, but because I had just taken it out of the box, um, I didn't want to take things apart or somehow break warranty. So I wrote to Lund and I wrote to the dealer as well. And they were both helpful and confirmed that it is just a matter of tightening the screws that hold the focuser together. You won't find this in the manual, which I think would be really helpful. But the manual does say something like, oh, it's amazing how many people just walk up to a solar telescope and have a quick look through without ever focusing, which I think is really funny and catty, considering that it was their focuser that just wasn't working right out of the box. Anyway, underneath this rubber ring here, if you push that back, it will reveal four tiny flathead screws. And all you have to do is tighten all four of them equally, and then the focuser will engage. You're going to need a very small flathead screwdriver like this. I'm really lucky that my husband has an inordinate amount of tools in the house. I know that screws and stuff rattle during transport, but that's why we have thread lockers. And I really feel like ultimately it would be easier for Lund to invest in some thread locker than for me to be sourcing the world's tiniest flathead screwdriver to then make sure that the focuser works. Now that that's all done, I'm going to set up the telescope outside and I'm going to show you the second adjustment that I've had to make. I've got the scope here on an HEQ5 Pro mount. It's definitely an overkill. Then normally I would just whack it on a small SynScan mount, but I wanted it to be as tall and stable as possible while I'm showing things. I'm using a Wi-Fi dongle so that I can control it with the SynScan Pro app. 
and I've just pointed the scope vaguely north. I told it to track the sun and it'll just take me in the rough area and then I can adjust the rest with the controls. But you can definitely do all of this with the handset as well. So what I found is that my soul searcher, this little type of solar finder scope wasn't aligned. When I had the sun in the eyepiece here, in the center of the eyepiece, it wasn't corresponding to it being in the center of the finder scope. If you want to fix this, I would recommend doing it with a camera and laptop. When I was doing it, I was doing it with an eyepiece and in 2020 hindsight, I would actually think it's easier to do it with the sun on screen. Um, so what you need to do is take the Allen key that is actually supplied in the box. It says, please read instructions before using Soul Searcher. There are no instructions. It's not in the manual, which would be really helpful. But if you want to fix this, then you need to take the Allen key, um, use this, go through this whole area to find where the sun is, um, put it in the center of your screen or your eyepiece, and then use the Allen key on these two screws to center the sun in this little round circle here. And then you're all sorted. As for the differences between the Coronado PST and this little Lunt, if you're looking to just do visual observations, um, you don't need a larger size filter. So the price between the two of them actually becomes pretty competitive, but I'm looking to do imaging. So this is the one for me. For the simple fact that with the Coronado PST, I couldn't get my planetary cameras with the standard one and a quarter inch nose piece to come to focus. The sensor of the camera just sits too far away and ZWO have stopped producing that low profile nose piece. And when I was researching the Lunt, I couldn't really find a definitive answer on whether it will definitely come to focus. But I can say now for sure that I've managed to focus it with four <laughs> planetary cameras with ZWO 224 color, 662 color, 120 mini, and finally 174 mono. And with this 174 mono, I actually didn't get any Newton rings, which is really great when you're doing solar imaging. Now I'm far from an experienced solar photographer, but I'm really enjoying this little telescope. And I've played around to find a workflow. I'm really enjoying taking full disk images like this. And I've even managed to resolve an International Space Station solar pass, which is great because this is only 40 millimeters. So maybe at some point I'll do a video about my imaging and processing. But until then, I really hope this was helpful and clear skies, everyone.